So, I see you've been lured in by the question posed in the title. Well, I suppose there's no need for a long-winded intro today. Let's cut right to it. This is the longest possible run in Lethal Company. Richard, hit that intro. The first question a lot of you might be wondering is, wait, is there a longest possible run in Lethal Company? The main gameplay loop of this game is going into randomly generated levels, gathering as many items as you can, and selling those items to try and beat a set quota. If you meet the quota, you're given another higher quota and three more days to meet it, and this goes on forever. There is no end credits, there is no winning, you just keep going to try and beat your high score. But if the quota keeps increasing every time, the question is, will it ever grow to a point where it's so big that you could never meet it, no matter how well you did? In order to find out, you're gonna need two things. A little bit of skill, and a little bit of luck. If you think you're gonna reach this mythic max quota by messing around, getting into shenanigans, and fleeing at the first sight of danger, guess again. You gotta be on your A game. You gotta go into that factory like you're Mr. Clean and leave no loot unlooted. If you're skilled enough to get every single piece of loot on a moon every single time, you just might stand a chance. The operative word, of course, being chance. Even if you play perfectly, get all the items and never die, there's a ton of variance in the number of items that can spawn, how much those items are worth, even what your next quota is. So in order to find the longest possible run, we also need to assume that you have perfect luck, however unlikely that may be. With that in mind, the plan here is pretty simple. We can easily calculate what each successive quota will be and we can calculate the maximum amount of money that you can make per day, then all we need to do is figure out where those two curves intersect. Let's start with the quota, because it's a lot easier. Every time you start a new run, your first quota is 130 bucks. After that, your quota increases based on this formula, where X is the cycle that you're currently on. You'll notice that this formula is quadratic. The little part with the X is raised to the second power. This is how we can tell that there is a maximum possible quota. The amount of money you're bringing in each day remains constant. Your intake increases linearly, but the quota will increase faster and faster and faster the longer you go, eventually growing to a point where you can't possibly reach it. You'll also notice this, uh, this situation over here, this whole thing going on. That's too many letters for a math equation. What the, what the hell, dude? This is the part that contributes to the randomness of the quota to make the game a little less predictable. Every time the game gives you a new quota, it generates a number from zero to one, converts that to a multiplier between negative 0.5 and 0.5 using this normal distribution curve, and then uses that as a random multiplier for your next quota. Sounds pretty confusing, but remember, in our case, we're assuming that you have the best possible luck, meaning you will always get a low roll on the quota increase. And this chart winds up looking a little more like this. So the final equation for your quota ends up looking like this. With that in hand, we can create a table to find each successive quota that you will need to beat. And that, that was the easy part. Our next task is to figure out how much money you could possibly make in a single three-day cycle. To do so, we need to assume three things. First, we need to assume that each moon spawns the maximum number of items every time. Every moon has a range of the total number of items it can spawn, 
and if you randomly get anything less than the max, you're basically screwed, you gotta start over. Second, we need to assume that all of the items are the most valuable type. All right, I don't wanna see any metal sheets up in here. We need stacks on stacks on stacks of gold bars and nothing else or something else depending on the moon. They all have different most valuable items. And third, even if you do find nothing but the rarest items, those items also have themselves a range of how much they can be worth. A gold bar can be worth as low as 102 bucks, AKA literal garbage. We're looking for that perfect 210 value. So in summary, to find the longest run, we need to assume three things. The max number of items spawn every day. All of those items are the most valuable type, and each of those individual items is at its maximum value. And you actually have to get all of the items. That's four things. As an example, experimentation can spawn anywhere from eight to 12 items, which can be anything from this list. So if it happens to spawn 12 items, every one of those items is a gold bar, and each of those gold bars is worth $210, that would be the absolute upper limit that is technically possible. It's incredibly rare, but it is possible. If you do this same process for every single moon, factoring in the apparatus that you can find on all the factory moons worth an extra 80 bucks, and the up to six beehives that you can find on select moons per day worth upwards of 150 each, it turns out that the single moon with the highest possible daily earnings is Titan. The items inside aren't crazy valuable, the most expensive thing is a fancy lamp worth 128, doesn't look that fancy to me, and it doesn't have any hives, but it can spawn a total of 38 items per day, which is way more than any other moon, so it ends up working out as the best. So, in order to get the perfect run, you need to go to Titan every single day, rain or shine, and find 38 fancy lamps and the apparatus every single day. There's no other combination that's gonna get you more than that. But there's one problem. You need to pay a $700 fee to go to Titan. And when you first start, you're dirt poor, so you can't get to Titan right away. Of the moons that you actually can go to, March is the best with its 17 possible gold bars, one apparatus, and six beehives a day. So, in order to achieve this perfect run, you need to start on March for your first three day cycle, loot at least $700, but realistically loot as much money as you possibly can every single day, and then every cycle after that, go to Titan. Because of this strategy, we actually need to adjust our quota formula a bit. Because we want to go to Titan as often as possible, we need to sell at least $700 worth of loot every cycle. So if the quota was ever less than 700, we should set it to be equal to 700. Now we know the amount that you have to spend every cycle, we can use the max value of each item acquired to figure out how much you make every single cycle, but there's still one problem. In this game, it's basically impossible to be perfectly efficient with your spending. The company won't accept half a lamp, so you'll probably have to overspend a bit each time. So we need to keep careful track of how many of each item we have at any given time and how we can best optimize spending them to hit the quota while still saving as much money as possible for the next time. As you can probably tell, this is a lot to keep track of. So I did what I do best. I made a spreadsheet. 
There's a lot here, but starting from the left, we have the cycle number that you're on, the minimum quota based on the formula we talked about at the beginning, and the amount that you'll actually have to spend to account for the Titan entrance fees for the first few cycles. Then for the next section, we have the total amount of loot you can acquire. This is all your intakes. On the first cycle, over three days, you should have 51 gold bars, 18 beehives, three apparatuses, and zero lamps. Going forward after that, you won't find any more gold bars or hives, they don't spawn on Titan, but you will gain an extra three apparatuses and 114 lamps every cycle, if you're lucky. Then, we need to find out how many of these items you actually need to sell to hit the quota. For the first day, you can cash in three gold bars and one apparatus to get to 710, just barely enough to get to Titan. After that, we're going to want to cash in lamps first, since they're the most common resource, and throw in some apparatuses to cover the extra cost to be the most efficient. To find out how many lamps we need to spend, we can divide the current amount owed by 128, the value of one lamp, and round any decimals down to find out how many lamps we need to spend to get as close to the quota as possible without going over. Then we'll use either an apparatus or a hive to cover the remainder. We'll try to save as many gold bars and hives as we can till the very end to try and get a big burst to possibly put us over the final hurdle since they're not renewable. Then we need to add in one last section to keep track of how many of each item we have left after selling to meet the quota, multiply each of those by their max value to find the total value of loot you've got on the ship after selling, and whenever that number dips below zero, that is the legendary quota that you cannot possibly surpass. And now, after all of that, it's time to reveal the answer. The maximum number of quotas that you can possibly complete in Lethal Company is 37. After that, even if you get as lucky as possible and do as well as possible, the next quota will be $56,902. Even if you sell all the gold bars and hives and apparatuses that you've been hoarding, you'll still be $19,780 short. Not even close. This is why I didn't talk about things like overtime bonuses or better selling optimization. Sure, you could probably save a couple hundred dollars in the long run, but you're gonna need a lot more than a couple hundred. If we plot the total amount of loot on board versus the cycle number that you're on, you'll see that for the first two thirds of the run, you're sitting pretty, increasing steadily until you have an all-time high of $248,484 worth of lamps and gold on board your ship. I mean, this place is truly overflowing with lamps. It is an excessive amount of lamps. I dare I say, too many lamps. But after that, you start having to sell at least 115 lamps per cycle more than the max 114 that you can bring in. And at this point, your bottom line gets real low, real fast. So, there you have it. The longest possible run in a lethal company would be clearing 37 quotas, the highest of which would be around 52,574 dollars. Anything higher than that is mathematically impossible. If you play flawlessly and have perfect luck, you can effectively beat Lethal Company in 37 cycles. Now, I could end the video here, but I do have one lingering question. This whole scenario relies on you being lucky. But just how lucky would you need to be? Figuring this out is not as easy as I thought, but as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't actually need. For starters, we assume that the quota needed to be as low as possible every time. 
but we have a ton of stuff left over, so clearly we didn't actually need it to be that lucky in those instances. Because the randomness of the quota is a multiplier, getting unlucky at the beginning of the run isn't that bad, and for the first five runs, you can afford to get a little unlucky. After that though, you're definitely going to need that low 0.5 multiplier. Based on my understanding of how this game generates that number, you have a 5% chance of getting that low roll, but you only need it on the last 30 cycles. The others, you have a 50-50 chance of getting a multiplier low enough to not screw you over. We also assumed that you needed a bunch of gold bars and beehives on the first cycle, but we never ended up using most of them. In reality, you only need to get at least 3 gold bars and 10 hives or some other loot of equivalent value that's probably a lot easier to find. Now, finding the odds of getting at least 3 gold bars, each of which only has a 0.52% chance to spawn over the course of 3 days where you could have anywhere from 13 to 17 items per day is not easy to figure out. Look, I like math more than your average fellow, but this is a bit much. So I tried to ask ChatGPT to calculate it for me, and I got super confused and started talking in circles for like 5 minutes until it randomly spit out the value of 3.51%. I have no idea if this is right or where it got this from, but as you'll see in a second, this is probably the most likely part of the run. It doesn't really matter that much. The real rare thing here is the lamps, because as opposed to the gold and the hives, we did end up spending every single lamp that we picked up to hit that last quota. We literally had exactly enough, kind of a crazy coincidence. This means that we actually do need Titan to spawn 38 items 108 days in a row. All of those items need to be lamps, and those lamps need to be of max value. That's a 1 in 16 chance of getting max items raised to the 108th power for how many days in a row we need this to happen, times a 2.84% spawn rate for lamps raised to the 4,104 lamps that we need, times a 1 in 64 chance for each lamp being max value, raised to the 4,104 lamps. Factor in the 1 half to the 5th times 1 20th to the 30th for the quota rolls and the 3.5% chance of getting those gold bars at the start, and you'll find that the odds of all these pieces aligning just right to allow you to actually achieve this perfect run is 1 in 10 to the 13,932. If that number is too big for you to comprehend, good. Normally whenever I come up with a massive number like this in a video, I like to find out the insane technical name for it and put 1 in 23 undebiliquin skillion in the title, but this number is too big for names. You ever heard of the Google, that massive number that you use to win arguments on the playground? That's 10 to the hundredth power, insanely big. This is 10 to the 13.9 thousandth power. The calculator that I use to figure this out, Wolfram Alpha, one of the most powerful calculators on the web that I know of, whose whole thing is dealing with insanely large numbers, looked at it and was like, hey, hey, that, that number you got right there, uh, yeah, that's basically infinity. Here's a little thought experiment for you. Say I have a bowl the size of the whole entire universe. And I fill that bowl with marbles the size of a single proton. That is 10 to the 125 marbles over a Google marbles. If you had the choice of trying to pick one lucky marble out of that bowl or completing this longest run in Lethal Company, which one should you pick? If you picked a Lethal Company, then you're a damn fool! I mean, clearly I chose this example for a reason, 
because you have a better chance of picking that one lucky proton size marble 111 times in a row than getting this lucky in Lethal Company. In fairness, there probably are ways to lower this probability. There's undoubtedly loads of combinations and permutations to get you to that 37 quotas that I haven't accounted for. Heck, I had to redo these calculations for these odds like five times. I wrote this part of the script at 1.30 in the morning on a Tuesday, so I'm not entirely sure that even I have it correct. I'm an engineer, not a mathematician, but if there are any math experts out there who want to take up the challenge of finding the true odds of getting a run, any run that can pass 37 quotas, I would be super interested to hear it. I bet the actual odds are a lot better than 1 in 10 to the 13,932, though low enough to where a human could conceivably do it. You know, I somehow doubt it. And there you have it. The longest run in a lethal company that is technically possible is 37 quotas completed. And if anyone ever claims to have done this, then you can say with more certainty than anything else in the universe that they cheated. Happy hunting, folks. A huge thanks to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Ferlano, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, Big Dog Tie for the Win, The Boss Killer 94, Alberung Freud and Celicate, and Sir Hammy. 